Welcome to Becoming Me While Raising You, sponsored by attorney Kelly Walling of Caperton Walling Law. This is the show where we learn about how to juggle our business life with peaceful parenting from moms that are doing just that. I'm your host, Kim Minch, a certified parent coach, the founder of Real Life Parent Guide, and the author of the book, Becoming Me While Raising You, A Mother's Journey to Herself. Every day, I help moms who are striving to optimize their intuition and gain confidence in their parenting. As a mother of five, I've learned parenting is the greatest opportunity to grow ourselves up. On today's episode, I'd like to introduce you to Holly Homer. Holly is a professional blogger running Kids Activities blog and the Quirky Mama Facebook page. Holly has used her blog and social media as a laboratory over the years to test all things traffic and algorithms. She's also a best-selling author. Her fourth book was released in June of 2021. Holly and her husband of 29 years live in the suburbs of Dallas with their three boys and a friend she named Panda. Holly, welcome to Becoming Me While Raising You. Thank you so much. I really like the word peaceful when it's <laughs> next to parenting. <laughs> that's, the, that's the optimum, right? It doesn't right. always happen that way. So Holly, I know that you have a fascinating journey of how you gained an online presence. And I'd love for you to share with our viewers, kind of, you know, take us through that path. Yeah, so it was started many, many years ago when there was less peace in my house because I had three little boys under the age of five, and it was just chaos. <laughs> and you know, when you have one or you have two, you're able to take them places and get out of the house, but you add that third one in the mix and all of a sudden, like, you just can't strap them all into the minivan on any given day. <laughs> And so I just found myself pretty isolated. And um, previous to that, uh, I had been um, working. I had was a physical therapist that you know ran pain clinics and saw patients all day. And so it was a real change from being a person that everybody listened to, and when you said things like people did it, <laughs> to all of a sudden being pretty isolated um, with people, little people that didn't really care what I had to say. <laughs> I get it. I've been there many times over. So I started, um, a friend of mine, uh, you know, we were, had been emailing back and forth on um, these really long emails um, once a week. And um, I got one Saturday morning, I got her email and the subject line was, I think we need to stop emailing. I was like, oh Wait. no, <laughs> like, this no, is my lifeline. I don't think you understand how important this is to my life. And she, what she went on to say is, there's this thing called a blog and that we need to go start these things. And she sent me to blogspot.com, which you can still go to today. And if you fill out a form and then within 10 minutes, you're a blogger, but I had no idea what that meant because <laughs> this was about 17 years ago. And um, so I started a blog, I called it June Cleaver Nirvana. <laughs> and I just started writing about like the little things that were happening at my house and kind of trying to add that silver lining because I had always wanted to be a stay at home mom. And, um, and what I found, I had never, I mean, you know, I have a science background, I had never taken a writing class, I, you know, I didn't, I had some scrapbooking. So I had picked up some photography skills, but like we're starting at square one on all of this. And um, and so writing every day and telling my story um, has helped me learn to write, but also um, it gave me a perspective of like those chaotic days and how if it was always like, like all hell would break loose and I would be almost hovering above the situation thinking, how am I gonna write this in a funny way? Mm. And it really changed my perspective. And I think it was such a blessing for me at that time. And clearly you must have probably um, inspired a lot of other mothers and or, you know, just just the feeling of camaraderie, of knowing mm -hmm. that you're not alone. I, I mean, so were you like one of the first... I was mom uh, by accident, <laughs> like one of the first mom bloggers. And um, and there were others out there. And that was another thing that was really helpful to me at that time was I found other people like myself. And so, and that was pre-social media. So there wasn't like, you know, we would go to each other's blogs and, and read and then leave comments every single day, just like you would on Facebook now or, or um, Instagram. And so some of those, you know, 
bloggers that I met back then are some of my dearest friends today. And, um, and then what was really cool is as, you know, as the blog kind of grew and, and other people found it, um, I get the sweetest, I think some of the sweetest notes were from um, grandmothers who would say, reading your stuff reminds me of those days. And, oh. and like, I still get chills today when I think about that, because I think that's something that we, we all, <laughs> it's, I feel like it's kind of that whole Seinfeld thing is like, it was a blog about nothing, but yet it was a blog about some of the most mm -hmm. important things mm -hmm. ever. Absolutely. And motherhood. I mean, I think we underestimate just how important, I don't know who said the days are long, but the years are short, but that's oh my so true, right? <laughs> so I mean, true. I'm, I'm now on the end of, you know, my fourth son going off to college and my daughter, the only one in high school. And it is becoming a crushingly, you know, major <laughs> realization that my toughest parenting years are over. And it feels like some of those days, like I'm sure you wrote about mm -hmm. felt incredible incredibly long and <laughs> no I always and I don't know who I think it was a book that was written like you know 12 hours until bedtime but that was always like in the back of my mind all right if I can just get everyone to bedtime <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. it's a success I love that okay so kids activity blog is um is is what you have but mm -hmm. then tell us about quirky mama how did that come about yeah so um so kids activities blog is kind of the blog that all of my writing over many many years kind of ended up in it was actually a um i bought it from another blogger um i probably close to 10 years ago and it was named quirky mama and so um and this is like for those of you branding experts let me tell you a cautionary tale <laughs> so but quirky mama quirky mama Mama, like I really liked the content and it, it worked well for um, what I was doing. But I, what I liked about it was it was these simple kids activities that um, no one was really writing about at that time. It was just super simple things to do, like a paper plate um, craft or a painting, how to make homemade paint or how to make Play-Doh. All those kind of those traditional play things that I think I think we haven't handed down to that next generation very effectively. So I thought, oh, I want to I want to do it for search engine optimization. I want it to be kids' activities. So I switched everything over on the site. And then when I went to the Facebook page, um, Facebook at that time was like, yeah, we really don't want you changing Facebook page names because that was you know quite a few years ago. And so I just kind of forgot about it, and um, I built the page on the Quirky Mama Facebook page and to complement the site. Um, but what we found is as we were building a community on Facebook, it was a lot more effective to kind of be the resource of all things parenting, like the because we're like living on the internet, so we know where the best and brightest content from across the internet is. And so we started sharing not just our activities, but you know, the best of this. And if I didn't have that, like we go out and find it, or this one is a better one. We'll show that one instead of ours. And, um, and so what it kind of turned out for the best is that, um, and I, I did after we had hit 1 million um, fans, I went to Facebook and I said, okay, I've made a mistake. I really need to rebrand this. And they were like, why would you change everything? You just, you know, why would you change anything? You just hit a million fans. And so um, we just kept it that way. And I love it because I feel like it allows us more flexibility. It allows me, like Kids Activities Blog, most people who use that site have small kids because that's when you're looking for things to do with your kids when mm -hmm. they're small. Whereas Quirky Mama on Facebook, especially with Facebook having a, an older audience to begin with, um, it works really well because we can have all the conversations. We don't have to just talk about kids' activities. That is amazing. And I know I've been privileged to be on once in a while with some of your um, interviewers mm -hmm. on Quirky Mama. Yeah. So I've really appreciated that. Um, tell us, though, and, and it sounds like as you've gone along, you've hit some challenges and you've been able to navigate it. Is there anything that is going on today? You have three and a half million people on the Facebook page, yeah. I believe. Um, is there anything that, that is a real obstacle for you today that you're learning how to work through? I, I mean, I think as an entrepreneur, <laughs> like, I don't know that there's any day that um, you aren't like, holy crap, <laughs> like, how is this even possible? Um, and I, th and, but like, I really through the years have learned what a blessing that is. Um, because when you're looking at data, and that's one of the ways I've 
built the site um, is that I've really looked at as like as a laboratory. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, let's try this. How did it work? Let's try this. How did it work? And so that's how we built like the Facebook page is um, let's post this. How many people saw it? Okay, well, let's go get it did well. Let's go get more like that. Okay, it's still doing well. Let's go get more. Oh, that didn't do so well. Like why? And then changing things or realizing that some things just aren't for Facebook. And so, you know, that's, you know, kind of the step by step. And what one of the interesting things that um, you kind of can look back on is that when things are going really, really well, you don't really worry about the data that much. And so the learning that happens when things are going swimmingly <laughs> is a small in comparison to when you fail and when you fail large. Um, because when you fail or when something just bombs or when it doesn't go the way you expect it, you like dive into the data and then you become the world's leading expert in whatever that problem was. Mm. And so to a certain extent, um, you know, failing and like, you know, I run maybe three or four websites right now, but like that, I run three or four websites for every 20 that failed. And, um, and so that knowledge that I gained through those failures is what is making me a success today. So those obstacles, when you get out of bed, you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's almost like, okay, what can we learn today? So it's a blessing in disguise. <laughs> it really it's, is. I mean, it's those <laughs> challenges that you face Mm -hmm. Are the opportunity to grow, to learn, to, I mean, and that could be applied to any business. Well, right? and parenting too. And you think about, um, it's the obstacles that keep others away. They're not willing to do that when you are, or they're not willing to learn that lesson, or they don't realize that it's a lesson to be learned and you do. And so, um, like to a certain extent, there's, it's not even a competition if I'm tackling all those every single day. Yeah, that's fantastic. Let's shift gears a little bit into the other very important <laughs> aspect of your life, um, and that is your family. Mm -hmm. You are married for 29 years? Yes. Me too. Um, some days that seems long, and some days <laughs> some not days so it's much. very short. <laughs> and three boys, mm -hmm. they're 15 to 20? Yes, 15, 18, and 20. So tell us about what that's like and what they're like. Yeah, so it's just super funny because like they were super high maintenance when they were little, and now I'm like walking around the house like is anyone home <laughs> like, does anyone want to play with me and they're all like rolling their eyes and moaning mom <laughs> which is kind of my job but um but it is it is funny how like times have changed and um there is a season for everything and so whereas the season in the early years were just like trying to keep them busy and out of trouble and now I'm trying to like pull them out of their rooms and out of trouble. <laughs> so. I am right there with you and and I hear you and my kids walk around with their headphones in all the time so you generally have to say things three times. Right. Mia, 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 you know before like the then they have to on the pull, head. you know. <laughs> yes. I mean it, it definitely does. It's very mm -hmm. physically demanding when they're mm -hmm. young. But actually, um, I've worked with moms over the years where that when their kids are launching, so in mm -hmm. this age yeah. range, it can be very challenging mentally. Mm -hmm. So um, tell me, we, one of the things we like to do on the show is give parenting tips. Mm -hmm. With those three boys and how busy they were when they were little, and now they're you got to pull them out of their yeah. rooms. What is your best parenting tip, Holly? Well, and I think kind of my whole business is based on this, that... Um, one of the benefits of being a parent is that we get to have childhood all over again. And so, and what we remember from childhood is play. And I think play is so important. I think, I think if you are like going to say, Hey, let's de-stress the world. <laughs> I think if we all just added a little bit more play in our life, it would, it would change, it would change wars. Um, and I think, cause it puts things in perspective. And so through the years, like one of the things, like you just, I've, you know, I've really tried to do is just let's have a little fun. Like, where can you sneak in this little fun? Where can you sneak in a joke? Where can you sneak in a hug? Where can you sneak in X, Y, or Z? And, um, and that doesn't stop when they're teenagers. Now, the good news is they like to do things I like to do now, whereas <laughs> before, like, you know, 47 games of Candyland is, you know, brain. Gets old. <laughs> brain numbing. Whereas now, you know, we can play poker or we can go out for a bike ride or we can go paddleboarding or whatever. But it, but it does, you know, we can't 
we as parents can't give up on that because it's hard. I, I totally agree with you. And, and I think, <clears throat> I think um, one of the things that it really, we have to remember that sometimes parents take things really personally when their kids especially get to be teen years mm-hmm. and they don't want to engage with us because they're naturally more drawn to their peers. However, we shouldn't stop. But it also, ha- they have to have some buy-in, right? We have mm-hmm. to, as they get older, it's like, what is it, what, do, what would you like to do? Mom's got a free afternoon right. and I'd love to do something with you. What would you like to do? Yeah. They have to have that buy-in and, um, but never to give up on the fun. I love to dance around my kitchen when mm-hmm. I cook because I hate cooking <laughs> and my kids, they make fun of me and they roll their eyes, but I know they find it entertaining. <laughs> it's something they'll remember, even though they'll roll their eyes probably until death. <laughs> and they do. And they do. And they do. So let's. Let Let's talk a little bit about if we um, we're talking to a mom that is looking to either get back in the workforce or start a business. Um, what what kind of advice would you give to that mom? So do it. Oh my gosh, this is like the best time in the world. Like I can, I'm so thankful. Like I wasn't like you know born a pioneer because that would be so hard. <laughs> and this is so much easier. And the cool thing about it is. Today, you could start something without a penny spent. And you can try and build things for months and months and months without spending a penny. And that, I don't think there's any other time in the history of the world that you could start a business with no overhead. And so I would encourage you, if you have an idea, let's do it. Let's start today. And every single day, like, I don't care if it's two minutes, if it's 20 minutes, if it's an hour, you're going to do something for that business so that it's always in the back of your mind. Because these empires, these online empires are built just a baby step at a time. Yeah. That the whole technology is a mixed blessing, right? Mm -hmm. We sometimes tend to get drawn into and focused on the negatives, but you're right. It is is a blessing to be able to do this. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here today. And thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Becoming Me While Raising You. On behalf of Holly and myself, remember, mothers are the emotional barometers in their families. So taking care of you while you build your legacy is not a luxury, it's a necessity. My passion is to help moms create peaceful homes through happier, healthier relationships with their kids by working on themselves. If you're looking for help on your parenting journey, please reach out to me through my website, reallifeparentguide.com. Until next time, namaste.